All right, let's talk about teleportation. So let me show you what I've got here. If I switch into teleport mode, I now have the option to teleport with the top button on the D-pad, which is space button one. If I hold that down, I'll now get a little cylinder here showing me where I could go. If I get out of range, it'll disappear, but it'll come back once I'm in range. And when I let go, I'll snap right to it and it won't change my rotation at all. So let's get into how that works. Now in order to do this, all you really need is just uh, some code in the character blueprint and one material here as well, just for the cylinder, which is included in the VR template that Epic provides, as well as the VR expansion plugins template. So you can look at it there. And in the character, what we're gonna do here is just grab face button one. I didn't even bother with the new project settings. I just wanna get this going, show you some super basic setup. And really, for a finished product, you'll probably want to put all of your controller interactions in the player controller blueprint. And then from there, manage how you're going to send that out to the different, maybe, characters, or pawns, whatever else the player can control with their controller. Switching to the UI, stuff like that. Yeah, you can all put into the player controller and handle it there and then pass it out to, say, an event in the character blueprint. But in order to set up something really quick and simple... What I've done here is when the face button one is pressed, which again is that top button on the D-pad for the Vive, we're going to check and see if we're in the teleport movement mode. Right now I'm just checking the right controller's movement mode, again just for simplicity. But just like we did before, you'd want to have the left and right available so that the player can choose which controller to use. Because Unreal Engine makes it so easy to do multiple movement modes, and to allow you to switch between the left and the right, there's really no excuse for you not to allow them to choose. So make sure in a finished project that you do that. Moving forward here, if we're in the teleport movement mode, I'm going to set timer by event, and I'm going to create a custom event here called find teleport location, and plug that into this timer here, which is set to loop every 0 0.05 seconds. So every 0 0.05 seconds, this custom event will fire and do all the logic that follows. Now, in order to turn this timer off to stop looping through this event, I'm going to set this timer as a variable, which is this return value. It gives you a timer handle structure that you can create a variable from. And you'll see when we release the button, we'll use that to clear and invalidate this timer. But since we're now looping this event, let's go over what happens here. We're gonna use the same trace function that we created uh, before. Again, only with the right controller, just for brevity's sake. We're gonna pass that into this trace. If you weren't there for that video and you're a super lazy American, I'll go ahead and come in here and show you what's going on real quick. So in this trace, we're gonna pass in that controller's location in the world. We're gonna make that the start of this line trace. Then I'm gonna get the forward vector of that controller times it by 500, and then add it to the current location to make the endpoint. Trace by visibility, and ignore self. And I just turned the draw debug off from the previous video just so it doesn't annoy me. This line trace is going to return a out hit result, which has a ton of information on it. We're only gonna use one part of it, just the location. And it also returns whether or not it actually hit anything at all. We pass that out in the return node, Back in the event graph, you can see that when we pass those out, we're gonna use it to set the teleport viewer's visibility. So the teleport viewer is a new static mesh component that I put into this character. It's just a cylinder from the base engine assets with that material that I pulled from the VR example template. Let's look at that really fast. So there's a lot of filler in the actual VR template. There's some Stuff up here you don't actually need so I took that out made this a color parameter so I could change that however I wanted easily and basically it multiplies that by four from emissive and then it does a little bit of math here I don't really like math so I'm not even gonna go over it and it's also not really something that is particular to the VR expansion plugin which is what I'm trying to focus on with these videos so moving along 
if we hit something, if that trace hits something, we're going to set the visibility of this teleport viewer, the static mesh, to visible. Okay? It hit something, true. Visibility, true. If we did not hit something, we're going to set the visibility to false. Back again, we're going to pull the hit result and the hit boolean into this branch and into this break in order to set our teleport target, which is a new variable in this character to allow us to save this to say where we want to teleport to. Because remember, you've got the controller pressed in at this point and you're pointing it around. So we're going to set the teleport target to wherever your last point target was. However, if you didn't hit anything, we're going to travel down here through the false path and set the teleport target to 000. Okay, and we'll use that later on. I'll show you to disable the teleport. So if we did not find a valid teleport target, we're not gonna move at all. But if we did, we're gonna set it to the location that we got from this hit result. We're going to set the world location of the teleport viewer, again, just a static mesh to show the player where they're going to end up. And we're gonna make sure this is set to teleport. We don't wanna sweep Sweep will actually take into account what's in your way towards that teleport target. So we don't really want to bother with that. If you want to, that's up to you. And teleport obviously makes it just a, you snap right there. So right now we're not moving the player at all yet. We're just setting the location of this viewer to show them where they will end up. Or if we don't hit a proper area, we don't have a successful hit, we're going to set it to zero so that we can cancel the teleport and just allow the player to release the button without doing anything. So let's say on release, we're gonna check again if we're in teleport because this is actually firing no matter what. So if we followed this press and we went to D-pad press controller and it didn't fire anything, that's not going to stop this released from firing. Released is still going to fire regardless of what happened here. So when we release, we wanna make sure we're still in the teleport mode here and we want to clear and evaluate that timer. Remember, that's that timer up here that allows this find teleport location event to fire. So we're basically going to say, OK, turn that off so that we're no longer taxing the game to check all this stuff. Then we're going to make sure that the teleport viewer is set to invisible, right? So no visibility, false on that, just in case it's still showing up. Then we're going to check and see, is the teleport target, this variable that we're setting up here, is that teleport target zero, which basically means, did we not find a hit result, okay? If we did not find a teleport target, then this will be set to zero, 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 and we will get a true right here. So this is saying, is A equal to B? So is the teleport target zero, zero, zero? Yes, it is. Okay, I don't want to do anything then. Don't teleport him. But if it isn't, then we must have set it to something else. We must have set it to anything else, somewhere else in the world that they want to teleport to. So let's go ahead and perform, <laughs> perform move action teleport. So this perform move action teleport is similar to the perform move action snap turn. And all it really needs is the VR movement reference, which is the movement component here in the character. It needs that in order to fire. And then it then asks you for a location where you want to go and the rotation for how you want to be facing. Okay. So right now I just have it to whatever the current actor rotation is so that we're not changing that by teleporting. We're only changing to the teleport target. And this skip encroachment check here, that's this node saying, do you want to make sure you're not ending up in someone else's business? So are you making sure that the collision on this character that's teleporting, they're not ending up in someone else's bubble, right? So they're not going into a wall, into another character, whatever, when they're teleporting. So if you change this to true, what will happen is it will skip this check, which will tell the teleport to not care if you're going into a wall or a sphere or, you know, another character, any other collision that you normally shouldn't be going into, it'll ignore that. However, the collision will still act like it normally does the next frame. So if you're not supposed to be in a wall and it'll push you out of a wall, it'll do that automatically and you won't be able to get inside there.
But usually, you'll want to check this off so that you don't end up somewhere you normally shouldn't be. So unless you know exactly what you want to do with this and you want to allow this character to get somewhere it normally shouldn't, or get inside something it normally shouldn't, you should leave this set to false. And really, that's that's it. Boom. And yeah, don't do this at home. A note on teleporting, I, I just, I really don't like it. Um, I myself have never gotten motion sickness from playing a VR game. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of people do. So, well, if you're like me and you don't like teleportation, you think it's really immersion breaking, you still essentially have to include it in your game. Because it's basically like if you don't have it in there, you're essentially building a staircase and not putting in a handicap ramp, you know? But some things to note about it is that you should take into account how fast the player moves in these other movement modes. So how long it takes to get from A to B. And any other issues like if you're avoiding, I don't know, gunfire or whatever else. Take that into account when you're creating your teleportation um, limits. So how far you can go out before you get there. So that you can't just boom, 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 you know. You can put a timer on it so it delays it, so you can't do it over and over and over again. Or you can just make it shorter. I prefer to just give them a timer so that it waits before they do it, so they're not just smashing the button like this. Um, but really, just do whatever you want. I mean, whatever works for your game or whatever else you're making. <laughs> 